Good morning, everybody. It's Brian Caprice from Keep Trading Simple, and welcome to our Tuesday Trade Talk. So, um, a lot of stuff happened last night, um, not necessarily in the, in the U.S. markets, but when we talk about overseas, we definitely had some um, large news releases. Uh, some things we talked about yesterday, again, if you're not tuning in for Monday morning, Monday morning we really focus on kind of setting up the entire week and look for our trading opportunities, although Monday is not always the largest mover, but it's great because we get to talk about the entire week. Um, Last night, we had some news releases that we'll go over, and we'll talk about what we have coming this morning. Uh, we have two very important releases, one at 8.30 and one at 10 a.m. Uh, for the Canadian dollar at 8.30 and then the U.S. dollar at 10. I'll go through those in a second and kind of explain the importance of those two, um, and we'll break it down. Um, <clears throat> before we begin, if anybody's new here, I definitely appreciate it. Um, I know this is a kind of a four-week rolling um, registration. Uh, that's the easiest way to do it. Make sure you attend all four weeks. Um, Tuesdays have actually been really amazing with some of the things that we've talked about. So uh, I'm excited that you guys are out here and let's just dive into everything. So for those that are new or have not heard from me before, uh, let me give you a quick brief bio. And the reason I tell you this is not to you know, bore you with the, with the details, but my trading style is different than a lot of other people. Um, I am a price action trader. I, you will not see indicators. You're not going to see volume. You're not going to see a lot of those things out there. Those, in my opinion, are distractions. Professionals tell you that you have to use. Um, you don't. Okay. If you understand how to read price, it doesn't matter what we're talking about, whether it be Forex, indices, commodities, markets work. With, with any buyers and sellers, markets work the same exact way. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. Even the buyers and sellers, that's all that matters. Okay. Um, I am also not a believer in spending 16 hours a day sitting in front of a computer. Uh, I preach this all the time. We have things called technology. <laughs> use it. There's no reason I have to sit here all day long. I'm just staring at computer screens. It's not healthy. Um, I believe the Surgeon General said that, you know, sitting is the new cigarette, right, basically is uh, what his comment was. Um, yesterday, I couldn't figure out who quoted it, and then I found it again last night. But uh, I've created a number of different programs, again, using that type of mentality, uh, specifically for Nadex, you know, the 30-minute trader or the five-minute binary courses. And those are people that have full-time jobs. Um, any of them, you know, again, depends on how much time you have sitting there. But um, what I've done is I've taken, I started trading back in 2000. Um, I've used that experience that I've accumulated trading stocks, options, Forex, then found binary options a few years ago. And then I also spent some time inside of the advisor division of one of the big three banks, kind of getting the inside view of kind of things to see, you know, what is it they're looking at? What is it, how, how are they handling things and what are their opinions? And, and it was very eye opening and um, realized that I really just had a passion for teaching people how to do it themselves. So, you know, that's what I do. Um, I am an educator. Um, I also trade. I take care of my two sons and then my little daughter there. She is uh, 16 months tomorrow. She crawls everywhere. She's almost talking. She's got a bunch of teeth and uh, she's definitely daddy's little girl. Um, I, I, I'm already fearful that she's got me wrapped around a little finger, but you know, whatever Jinjin wants, Jinjin gets is kind of the uh, status that we're in right now. All right. So let's dive into some charts. Let's talk about some, uh, you know, the, the markets. Before we do that, let me cover a quick Nadex risk disclaimer. Trading on Nadex involves financial risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The information presented here is for information and education purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Now, any trading decision that you make is solely your responsibility. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Nadex contracts are based on underlying asset classes, including Forex, stock index futures, and commodity futures. Now, trading can be volatile and investors risk losing their investments on any given transaction. However, the design of Nadex contract ensures investors cannot lose more than the cost end of the transaction. Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC. Now, one of the things I'm going to mention in, in like two minutes here is obviously this, and again, I bring this up every morning, is this Nadex is, uh, the, you know, the design of the contracts ensures that investors cannot lose more than the cost end of the transaction. I'm going to show you an example of exactly how this kind of unfolded last night. Um, I mentioned yesterday that one of the big news releases this week was going to be the um, Aussie dollar cash uh, rate drop. It was forecast. Everybody knew it was happening, but it's a situation where we knew where it was going to turn. Okay. Um, a very easy way to take this would be with a Nadex contract. Again, because we didn't know how far it was going to spike up. We had an idea and actually we marked it off on the chart and I'll show you in a second. Um, and ended up dropping, you know, about 40, 50 pips um, just in the overnight session um, right off of that area. And it was a perfect example of why understanding, you know, this this final clause here is important in your trading. And if you're not doing it, you're definitely missing out. All right. Um, this was the top three for the week. Just to review, if you weren't here yesterday, obviously non-farm payroll, obviously ISM manufacturing. OK, uh, there's two of them. There is manufacturing, which is today. And then there's the non-manufacturing PMI, which is Thursday. Um, 
I think we'll have a. I think today. I mean, both of them are going to be great releases. I think today is going to be a big number. But I think as we get deeper into the week, I think um, you know, if we don't have the movement, I, I think there will be more. Um, I think that one may be a little bit more of a mover. But again, both of them are great releases. And then again, cash rate last night. That's the one we just talked about. Um, I'll show that to you in a chart. Now, let me drag another window in real quick. This is kind of the scenario that we have sitting right now. And as you guys can see, this is a scanner that I use for myself. Um, you know, one of the big things I look at as a currency trader, the first thing is uh, I want to learn what the, the 24 hour FIP changes are. I want to know what the current environment is of the overall market. Dollar Swiss, man, is on an absolute tear. Okay, it's up 60 pips. That's above its ATR in the last 24 hours. You can see that everything else is more or less muted. You can see the Aussie dollar is down 56 and the Aussie yen is down uh, 39 from where we were yesterday. Okay. Um, both of these are due to the, the rate change, again, dollar strength, but most of the rate change. So at 8.30 this morning, we have CAD GDP, very important number, and here's why. Previously, it came in at 0.2, which was actually wrong. Um, you guys can see here that the forecast was 0.1, it came in at 0.2, so it was a surprise at the top side last time. This time, again, they're saying it's going to be 0.1 again, which is obviously lower than the forecast. So... Again, another miss of the top side is good for the Canadian dollar. That pair has just been an absolute just, oh, it's just been, I, I call it, it's in an umbrella formation, which is just kind of go away, you know, come back another day type situation. Um, that'll give us some movement today, hopefully clear out some of that junk to the top or bottom, give us some nice tradable zones off of that one. And that's at 8.30 and then at 10 a.m. is the ISM manufacturing, okay? Now, ISM manufacturing PMI, this is a very important number, okay? Above 50 is great, below 50 is considered bad. And the market is priced in above 50, Previously, we were at 49.1. So this was like, oh my God, manufacturing shutting off, it's slowing down. Well, they're forecasting above 50. The market has priced in above 50. If this doesn't come in above 50, uh, I think it's going to be pretty negative today on the indices. I think the market, the overall market is going to be down. All right. So this is just not a currency play. This is also talking about the overall indices, the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Russell, all U.S. basically down. Okay. Um, if there's a, is a miss on this one. Now, the other thing that's important to note about this one, and again, this is for those futures traders out there. I do know other markets besides currencies. I just prefer currencies the most. This is at 10 o'clock. The two most common times when we have reversals in the market are at 10 or 10.30 in the morning. So depending on how the market starts this morning, if it starts off great and we get bad data the rest of the day, down. Okay, This could be the, this could be the catalyst for a market reversal for the day. All right. Um, one of the things too I like about Forex Factory is the fact that it does have all the news. I love this. Piggy bull has cost China over $140 billion, you know, agriculture. Uh, this is some good data though. Again, US and North Korea to hold nuclear talks. Okay, that's a good thing, right? Everybody, you know, that's always wonderful. Um, and again, you can always pick up some gems over here as well. Manufacturing, job was cut rates, you know, marks, yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest of it is just kind of there. All right, so go. One of the things too is going into tomorrow, just want you guys to know, we have ADP non and farm employment change tomorrow. That's going to be an important number, and that's going to really set the tone for the futures market first thing. And then oil, okay? I don't know how many of you guys are trading oil out there. Um, was not last week, two weeks ago, I actually set up an oil trade in it, and it literally, it, it was a zone that I formed on the one-hour chart, and it literally came right up to it, and then just spiked. It just collapsed all the way back down again. Um, it was a very, very easy trade set up, and I was like, hey, you guys trading this? It works over here, too. So understand if you have a strategy that is a viable strategy, it doesn't matter what market you're looking at. A chart is a chart is a chart. You should be able to trade it. And uh, we were able to do that. And oil for tomorrow has actually been pretty crazy. Um, even though we had drone strikes, as I mentioned before, and I, it's my, like my big joke, like, did it actually happen? You know, it happened here, right, in between these two. And what are we doing? We're getting more of a surplus. So supposedly production is down. We're not producing it if it actually happened. And yet our surplus is growing and getting higher and higher and higher. So Pretty interesting. I think it's going to be a fun time. If you guys are not looking at oil this week, definitely take a look at it. Um, it it's worth a it's worth a gander there. Okay. And again, news breakout strategies uh, galore on that one. All right. So let me drag this back over out of the way. Uh, let's drop this down and let's bring some charts up. So as you guys can see, yesterday we talked about buying and selling areas. We mentioned that we had an area up top and an area below. If we had any type of crazy movement back and forth. When we broke it down to the four hour, which is down here, we said that, hey, we had a zone right here. We've seen kind of it, you know, reach us, you know, once before. And then, and again, I'm, I'm just going to leave that there because that's where we were before. I'll, I'll extend it with this. You can see there's our zone. Well, here, this spike into this, here's first spike, right? Came back down. This spike right here, this just happens to be the Aussie rate cut. So even though it was forecast, 
What did it do? It launched itself right up into the zone where, again, we expected it to be, and then it collapsed. Now, this is that situation that I was talking about, why having these Nadex contracts and not being able to lose more is absolutely amazing. And if you're not doing this, it's, again, shame on you, right? Had we got in at a strike over here at 73.20, right? What happened? Oh, well, it went all the way up to 73.37, but again, you could only lose what you put into the trade. You could have traded something out of the money, and what did it do? It collapsed all the way down to here. We went from 73.20 all the way down here to a low of 73.46. We went 90 pips in eight hours, okay? That's almost, that's almost five strike prices to the downside off of news that was already forecast. So this is why I absolutely love Nadex. And again, if you're not trading news breakouts, you're you're absolutely missing the boat on this one, okay? Now, what are we doing now? We are driving to the downside. Again, it has put it in there. You now, we're seeing a little bit of a kickback. Again, that's expected. You're going to run into levels on the way down, okay? You're seeing, you know, looking over here. Let's bring this up, bring it over. You guys will see, we have an area of buyers right here. Again, a little bit of a hidden area. We have ascending candles, right, here and then here. So again, we have some buyers here. I have a couple of buyers down here. So it's grinding its way down. It's going to have a couple of speed bumps on the way down. But as of right now, you know the Aussie dollar, or, you know the the Australian market. There's nothing that's bringing strength. They're talking about weakness. Um, yeah, I mean they're planning for a recession. I mean it just it is what it is. They're kind of they're not one of the the you know the world leaders right now as far as economy goes. Um, and both the New Zealand dollar, you know, the New Zealand economy and the Australian economy are both kind of pulling back. So not surprised we're seeing this kind of push to the downside. Um, if you are taking longer term short, you know, longer term, you know, shorting positions, uh, again, for me, this 7150 is a kind of an area that I'm looking for before I'm really looking to get long. But, you know, in this case, I'm looking more for pullbacks than anything else. The trade was right here okay, in the middle of the night. You could have set yourself. And even if you set it here um, and yeah, it came across and you, you, you dinged it right here and it just it just dropped. I mean, that's an 80 pit mover. Great, great. Great trade set up, and again, that was the number three news of the of the week of what we looked at. All right, um, going across, let me pull um, this and Aussie dollar. So Aussie dollar, as you know, is down 56 right now. Same situation. So this one though, okay, this one had the same type of pullback. It it pushed its way up, and then in eight hours, it's basically collapsed from 80. About, this one is about 90 pips on the way down, right? We went up to 67, 75, all the way back down. Now, a little bit different in this one is you can see we are sitting inside of a large demand zone. So this one, again, you're seeing a lot more kind of playing back and forth here on the 30-minute chart. And the reason why is because we are in a daily area of demand where we have buyers stepping in. Now, does that mean it cannot go lower? Absolutely not. I mean, it can obviously go lower, but what it needs to do is it needs to grind through those orders. It needs to eat those orders up. And again, you're seeing a basing right now. You had this big push down, and you're seeing a bit of basing. And on the lower time frame, on the 30-minute, what are you seeing? Pop up go down, pop up, grab some of these orders again, go down again, and then it's kind of pushing up again. And again, this is kind of a defined kind of area to grab orders in. Okay, again, this is a formation that I talk about all the time. It's a wick over wick. And what did it do? It dropped, came up, hit it again, dropped again, grabbed it again, pushed down, and again, we're kind of seeing now, this strong red, this strong green, if we get a strong red through, that looks like it's going to try to make another attempt lower. So, um, it's definitely grabbing some orders. Uh, buyers are definitely coming in to the top side. It looks like it wants to drive through, but until we can really breach the bottom, the side of this one at 66.80, not looking to get short at this point. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to be shorting it into the very, very final bit of that kind of buying area. Um, that's where it gets dangerous. You know, you talk about trying to catch a falling knife or stepping in front of a moving train, those kind of things. Um, you know, just not worth it in my eyes. Let's wait for it to go through, bounce back into the area. Use it as a momentum breakout to the downside. To me, that looks like a much better opportunity. Okay, because again, it will, you know, it will eventually run into buyers and it will, you know, it will retrace a bit back. And that's the worst thing you want to do is be the person that shorts it just for it to retrace back into you, just to wipe it, you know, take out, you know, your stop loss and easy money. Okay. But again, same trade set, same trade setup between the two. Now dropping across the Euro pound. Euro pound again, interesting situation. Um, we're now officially in October. Why is October important? Well, you know, when when is Brexit, right? When is Brexit happening? Um, you know, big question is, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, nobody truly knows. Um, I don't even think they know. I think they're kind of planning back and forth. Um, not sure, right? If somebody mentions this Brexit, this thing will kind of skyrocket one direction or the other one. Um, 
thing is, it's going to be, is it going to, are they going to be allowed to leave? Or are they not going to leave? Are they going to revote on it? Or is it going to be a hard exit? Is it going to be a soft exit? What's going on with, you know, Ireland? A um, lot, lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of kind of indecision about this one. So it hasn't had as much movement as we like. You can see that in the last basically hour, we've had kind of a rally back up again. But we, as we marked off yesterday, we had this red zone here, and I drew lines across just to make sure you guys knew I wasn't cherry picking anything. We ended up hitting that zone, went all the way back down. And what did we do? We grabbed the orders back in kind of this little warning level that we had down here, and it went right back up again. So it's really wedged between what I would say a rock and a hard place. I mean, you're talking about a, about a 50 pip zone top to bottom. But unfortunately, again, if we're going to use move, we know we need to get a little bit of movement. If you're trading in Nadex, you just got to remember that contracts expire and we have to have enough movement that justifies this. Okay. If we're taking it at the money uh, binary, yeah, it only has to move a very, very tiny bit, sure. But our risk is very high on that, right? It's a one to one risk to reward ratio, which means you need to be right a lot, right? Versus something that may be slightly out of the money. And then we need. Let, you know, we need a little bit more movement, but our risk to reward ratio is higher. So again, it's a kind of a balancing act in this one, but it's been bouncing back and forth in this channel at this point. Um, you know, this one is kind of a toss up. You know, a lot of people are like, well, do you take it in Forex? Do you take it in Nadex? Honestly, you can take it in either. You just have to make sure that you have the right time frame. Okay. Um, and again, you guys can see some of the spikes here. You know, you're talking about, you know, these being mostly, you know, yesterday and then just kind of flat line and then today it's kind of up. So unfortunately with Euro not really having a lot of news, this one tends to lack a little bit of catalyst. Um, but again, you have some pound news later in the week that I think um, you know may be worthy of, of trading. Euro yen, okay, Euro yen is one of those other ones. Um, basically, just sideways again. This had that same zone yesterday, kind of bounced down and then kind of retest, you know, retrace back up again. This one also has been kind of between, uh, but I'd say I'll say right now, a rock and a hard place. Okay, here's your bottom side, top side, bottom side, and it's coming back up, and it's again, it's running into sell orders right in here. Okay, that's it's. Pretty, pretty, pretty well defined in there. Now this zone at least is um, 118.30 down to 117.70 ish, right? So I mean you're talking about 60 pips. It's about the same. I understand that's you know three strike, you know three contract differentials um, on a daily contract. So it's there. You know I, I like where it is right now. It is you know on the upper side of this kind of burst and you know again price pushed down. It went back up again and it's failed to go higher and it's kind of forming a little bit of a pendant in here. So you know, not a horrible place, but I don't really see anything besides the U.S. market that's going to drive this one. And yes, the U.S. market because it's associated to the yen. So, you know, is there anything I love in this one? Not really. I mean, I, I like this top side for sells. I like this bottom side for buys. We're kind of smack in the middle. Um, you know, again, we had this little zone here and we, we did pull back into it. So, you know, you got to be cautious with something like that. But, you know, it's, it's okay. I mean, I'd rate this as probably like a, a B minus type trade if you're looking to trade this one today. Um, Nothing, nothing stands out besides these two. I mean, if you want to set some alerts, again, if you're not setting alerts, I would highly recommend that you guys get in the habit of doing it. You know, if you want to set alerts, you know, set an alert here and you know, um, copy, paste, set an alert here. Okay, um, be nice to know when these are ha when these are you know approaching. Uh, we can change it to something that you guys can see. Here, you know what? I'll just cancel that one. I'll just copy here. Go. Do something like this, you know, notify yourself. I know, I know somebody's out there going, hey, those lines are not straight. <laughs> there you go. Um, I thought that one was straight. There we go, okay. Uh, you know, you guys can set set yourself alerts, okay? Have it email you, let it know when you, break, when you breach the top or the bottom, then come look at it. Don't sit here and stare and be like, oh God, where's it at? What am I gonna trade? Um, wait till we get close to one of those two zones and then, you know, trade it from there. Um, right now, again, it's basically sideways. We are more or less engulfed, you know? Um, it's just it's flat, right? Big spike up, big spike down, sideways. Okay, so in that case, move on to the next one, see what else you got. All right, so your dollar continuing to push down, although we did push right back over. Last night in my presentation, I was talking about we finally breached 109. I'm loving it. I think that's great. I would love for this to kind of push back down again. Um, push back over 109, but we're just, we're just barely, we're at, you know, 109.01 right now. So, um, you know, it is what it is. What are you going to do? Right. Um, I am definitely liking this one again. I, I see European recession. I don't think anything stronger there. The dollar is continuing to push higher. Um, if we get any type of, uh, I mean, again, any good U S number that is, is really showing that the dollar is strong. 
that will prevent us from getting any additional rate cuts, that's going to continue to push this lower and lower and lower. And one thing I pointed out last night, again, it, and it's doing pretty well. I mean, again, it pulled back, grabbed more, pushed down, pulled back in an area right now. It's kind of sitting there right now. I'll bring this up to a, a monthly, oops, right there. Okay. You guys will see the last time we were in this area, we're talking about December, you know, December 2016, January 2017 ish. That's the last time we were down in this area. Okay. So it's pretty exciting that we've pushed all the way back down again. And it's starting to make another push now. So we are just, we're, it's hard to see from here. You see this little pattern right here? That's kind of where we're starting to see some pops, right? It's in a monthly area of demand. And we're kind of at the, the tail end of it. So you always kind of see that. That's pretty common. But we are getting back into an area. And again, this is a, this, ignore this yellow on this chart because it wasn't drawn here. I believe this was drawn on a weekly. Um, but we're starting to get down to that area. Okay, we're starting to get close. And that's down at the, Basically 107.68, so about 120 pips from where we are right now. This has an ATR, again, this, let me bring this back down to um, a daily, okay? This has a daily ATR of 75. So in a day or two of downward movement, downward pressure, we could be down there inside of that weekly level. So pretty important. Again, I am definitely bearish this pair. I like the fact that we have dollar strength in there. Um, really, really enjoying this one. So let it keep coming down. Um, Totally fine with that one. Uh, right now, again, I'm looking for basically sell zones um, up in where's my rectangle? Probably, probably in there for short-term sells. Um, again, nice pop off of that one. Again, this is price action happened at nine o'clock yesterday morning. I mean, it just launched back down again and then continued to push a bit lower. Okay, and again, that would be up in this zone. Um, I like it on the 30-minute as well. Uh, again, you can see it right here. Descending candles. This was the pop. It gapped up. Okay, this came. Uh, you know. We got a gap, we got descending candles, and we got a large burst off of it. So something along those lines. Um, you're talking about, let's see, talking about a six pip range. So very small range. Um, if we can get up in there, especially around some type of news release, um, that would be ideal. You know, I jump down and look at a two hour binary on that one, or maybe even a small term spread, um, see what we can get out of it. Um, again, it's it's about 40 pips from where we are right now. Um, US news could drive this up, and if it does, then yeah, I'd be looking for some type of a short. Um, that retracement. So again, if ISM is able to jump at 40 pips, which ISM has the ability if it misses, it can launch it there. I'd be looking at two-hour binary to take this back to the downside. You know, and again, understand that any trade that you guys place is solely your responsibility. That's just what my opinion is that I'd be looking to take some shorts off of that. All right. So dropping across to the pound yen. Now I was trying to find it real quick for you guys. Um, if you guys look, okay, you guys can see right here. Here is the deadline of the October 31st deadline, okay? So this is, uh, again, this is Brexit, 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 okay? It is fast approaching. We are less than a month away. And again, this is, a uh, again, you guys have seen me show daily effects before. October 31st is the deadline. So I believe that we will start seeing more and more and more information and news releases and comments about Brexit. If you remember before, last time we were talking about Brexit, you know, we were talking about it over here, and this is what we had. Every day, it was up 200 pips, or, you know, again, every two days, we were going 200 pips in either direction, bouncing back and forth. This is the last time. This was that January, February time period, or I guess February, March time period, the first time we had a lot of Brexit news. Now, let's go over here, <clears throat> and we can be in the same situation. Now, right now, it's not quite there, right? Yesterday, I told you guys we marked off, again, rocking a hard place between these two zones. We ended up hitting the top zone yesterday. And have pulled back from it, but it's rather flat, you know. Um, again, looking at Forex Factory, you know, bringing this back in again, you'll see that we have have it minus two pips in 24 hours. You know, a bit of movement at the 60 minute, but it's just been basically retracing. It's it's really not, it's it's stuck right now. Nobody really knows what's happening. Um, and and again, that's kind of the problem. Is it's just there's so much indecision. Nobody knows, right? So again, be cautious of that when you're talking about 133.20 down to 132.20. Again, 100 pip range, so. You know, a couple of strike prices in between those two. Um, make sure you have a good confirmation. But even so, looking, I mean, looking at here, you guys can see chopped up, chopped back down, chopped up, chopped back down, kind of went up again, chopped back down to the lower side. So it is jumpy. It, it is very fast in a 30 minute window. You're jumping about 40 pips, top to bottom. Just make sure you're on the right side of that jump back and forth if you're going to be looking to trade this position. Okay. Um, <clears throat> looking at pound dollar. Now, pound dollar, kind of the same thing, right? You guys are seeing large movement. Um, it's actually not large when you, when you stretch it out. 
you can see too, this one really came down hard and it stopped. And looking across, you guys can see, as I mentioned before, being able to read the wicks is extremely important. Okay, here's one, and then there's a higher one. What does that mean? We have ascending wicks on the bottoms. Okay, and that's what it's running into. It came very, very strong, then all of a sudden, what is it running into? It's running into buyers at this level. So you can see that it basically stopped again, sideways movement up down. Um, this kind of wick down here finally gave us some clearance to the downside. I expect this to go kind of in a similar situation as the, the last one. Um, it will eventually clear, and then we are sitting inside of a daily racetrack. So something that I'm looking at, it's not a today type trade, but I'm looking to refill this area here. Okay, basically from 122 down to uh, basically 120. It's about a 200 pip range. It's something that I have on my radar. It is not set up ready to go yet. I'm not telling you guys to get short right now. It's not there. It's got an area of buyers. It's got to burn through first. But it's just something I want you guys to keep, you know, again, I'm not going to be with you Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, um, or even, you know, going into, you know, or even Sunday night. But I will see you guys next Monday morning. Just keep this in mind that there's a potential area there where there are some shorts coming in. Now, if the, do the U.S. dollar info is bad, yes, this can absolutely pop up again. And unfortunately, look at this one in the four hour. Not a whole lot of pops that are absolutely great. You know, you got one here that's not too bad. Again, this is, again, what this is called is a wick over wick, something that we trade quite often. Okay. Uh, let me change this. Okay. You'll see that we've already hit it one time. Now, it hasn't made it up. You know, this is bullish stop. There's really not a whole lot of clean until we get up to this area here at 123.72. So just keep an eye on that one. Um, if we do get a pop, and again, you're talking, let's see, 70. It's about 100 pips. I don't think ISM is going to jump this 100. It would have to be really, really bad for it to jump that much. Um, but again, non-farm tomorrow morning, yes. Okay, If this pops today and then we have non-farm that pops into it tomorrow, non-farm, the ADP non-farm uh, employment change absolutely has the ability to jump this 100 pips. Just keep that on your radar for tomorrow morning if you are not able to find any trades on it today. Okay. Um, looking down at Dollar Cat, as I mentioned, Dollar Cat uh, today actually has that GDP statement. Oh, look at this one. It's just, this is just, oh, it's just horrible, right? Since the gap on Sunday, we've basically been stuck inside the same range. Now we are at the top, which is great. But a lot of times when we drive up in a zones like that, we've driven all the way up before the, the data. A lot of times you're going to see a retracement to the downside. So it's kind of setting up right now on the 30 minute, and the four hour, looking like it's going to be a short. That news comes out in 30 minutes. Um, what that would be is basically good CAD news. Okay, so we will see. Um, obviously, because the US dollar is first, we had news would continue to drive this higher. Areas that I'm looking for on this one to the top side, we do have this gap, but again, we have this area marked off. Uh, this was coming back from a farther level. Um, it's up at 133.41 to 133, basically 65. Um, any type of a burst spike up into that area, again, I'd be looking for some type of a short position. Downside, it's a little bit harder. Okay, we do have, you know, basically a bottom formed over here. Uh, I'll take this one and we'll kind of move it over. You know, looking at kind of a level to the downside there. So, I mean, if I had to pick, you know, tops and bottoms, um, probably be looking at something like that. Uh, but there are two here. Again, there's another level down below it. So, we'll see. I mean, this is 73. It's about a 60 pit move. Yeah. GDP could. GDP is most likely going to move 30 to 40 unless it's really bad. Um, so it's a little bit far for this move. We'll see if we're able to spike into it, but it may be a fast trade. So just make sure you guys are watching it. Um, this one, I would not try to time beforehand. I would wait to see if there's a miss. Because like I said, whenever you're talking about GDP, it's a very small number. Um, you know, typically, you guys can see over here. Typically, when they've missed, it's by 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. This one was obviously in the opposite direction. They missed it by 0 0.2. So... Uh, and again, we're about due. Again, we could hit, and there's not going to be any movement whatsoever. Okay, again, they, it's a confirmation that it is slowing down, that it is you know lower than it was before. But uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's anything that is you know earth-shaking, phenomenal. Man, this is the trade of the day. You know, I'm not gonna, you know, it's not it's not kind of one of those things. So just be a bit cautious. But again, for me, it is lining up. I am actually you know looking at it right now, just on a technical basis, not looking at the news at all. I am looking at this one actually probably in more of a bearish light right now. Uh, and that's kind of what my sentiment would be for the day. Um, going across and looking at the Swiss, I'll show you this one. Um, I don't trade the Swiss too often, though. This one is just on a tear, okay? It is just going, going, and going. It's just way up. Um, it's just, I mean, we are above, we are at parity right now, okay? We had been down for so long, right? 
We've been down here since really like the middle of June, right? We are back up. We are over. We are, you know, nine pips above parity. Uh, we are in a kind of a zone, but it's not really the best zone. Um, you know, looking at it, um, gotta, I'll map it out for you guys. Um, there's your zone formation. And that's what we ran into. Okay. I do believe we're going to burst through the top of this one. Um, looking at on the lower time frame, you can see actually we are getting a confirmation to the downside, but it looks like it's just getting some more orders. Um, it looks like it wants to grab some more. This is a pretty healthy kind of run up. Um, there's some buyers in here. So uh, we'll see what this one is able to do. Um, you know, a lot of this, a lot of this pair right now is because, again, there's not a lot of drama. Um, you know, things like the U.S. and North Korea are going to hold nuclear talks. That is what's giving this more power. Um, again, what happens is when, you know, people are shooting missiles at each other, the, the Swiss gain some strength. Well, you know, if we're holding nuclear talks, that's typically a good thing. That's what's giving us all this strength in this pair, right? It's, it's, it's basically the U.S. dollar strengthening and the Swiss, you know, money being taken, you know, taken out of it. So that's what's driving it higher. Um, kind of one of those things. Now, if those talks suddenly fall apart, you do expect this to kind of turn, flip, and drop, okay? Uh, but again, that's not something that any of us would know until after the fact. But just keep an eye on it. But again, I do like the 30 minute. It, it does look like it's getting bearish. But um, one of the things I, you know, I will kind of highlight to you guys is you'll hear me mention the word momentum breakout. Well, momentum breakout for us is when we break a level, get some white space under it, retest back to it, and then use it as a launching point. Although to me, yeah, it looks like it, it wants to kind of, you know, meander around a little bit until we get um, that data today. But we'll see how this one unfolds. Um, looking over at the dollar yen. Okay, now dollar yen. We marked this level off yesterday. We said that we were approaching a sell zone, and here you go, right here. Eight hours ago, we literally smacked right into it. Okay, so again, this was drawn for you guys. This is a level that we've had marked off for weeks now, right? If we got back up to here, the last time we hit it, we came all the way back down and hit our profit target. We've now reached again, and price has pulled back um, from its peak. It is, let's see, 46 down to, you know, about 20 pips down already in the overnight. Um, again, this is also signaling to me that we could have somewhat of a kind of push to the downside. And again, this is a pair that will react to the ISM manufacturing data at 10 o'clock today. So just keep an eye on it. Again, this is a nice little pop up. It grabs more buyers, but we are at a failure to go higher situation right now. I mean, it, it made an attempt. If this starts to kind of put, you know, lower, lower high in here, we get a green and then we start getting a red down. That's going to be a big signal to me that, you know, again, we need to be bearish this pair today. Okay. Um, Again, this one you can play with binaries. You can play this one with spreads. Um, you know, a couple different ways you could, you know, handle this one. Um, I'm trying to think on the four hour. I mean, the problem is we're we're sitting. Yes, this could be a pullback, but we're sitting right in a pretty nice little demand zone. So I'm sorry, uh, a supply zone. Um, yeah, probably. I don't know that I would go long on this one, especially seeing that we've had this, you know, the the failure on this one um, to go any higher. Um, yeah, I don't know that I'd do that one. Um, also, guys, on this one, too, this is a touch bracket pair as well. Um, I don't trade a ton of touch brackets on this one, but this is one of the four touch bracketable pairs. Um, if you guys are not looking at that one, again, this could, is a potential touch bracket to the downside as well. Um, you know, that, that puts your stop loss in there. Um, the, there actually is a touch bracket with a uh, 108.48 as being the kind of top side of it. So. Um, it's not, not, not necessarily a bad little spot. Okay, so there is one. If you guys aren't looking at that, go over and look at the touch bracket for that. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Last but not least, uh, let me pull one last thing up for you guys. Um, let me pull crude oil real fast. I'm going to pull in another chart for this one, and I just want to point something out real quick for crude. As you guys can see, again, I'm just using a website. I'm pulling this in. Um, in crude, okay, we had this large spike. Okay, you guys remember this, the 16th, this is when all the drone strikes happen, and we talked about a parabolic retracement. Um, this is the definition of a parabolic retracement. Okay, we've actually hit profit a couple days ago. Um, actually, your first profit probably would have been over here on the 26th. But again, now, be cautious with oil going into tomorrow's release, because we've been at this level for quite some time um, in drawing rectangles, right? No, we had one level here. Again, that was kind of what our profit target was. But again, it's part of a bigger kind of a bigger kind of area here, right, that we're looking at. So with that being said, going into the news tomorrow, again, this is a daily, this is a daily, you know, this is a daily chart, right? We are sitting in an area of demand, 
Okay. Yes, we have news tomorrow, but look at this one on lower time frames. But know that the market right now is going to be a little bit more uh, bullish biased because we are sitting in a demand zone. And remember, that news tomorrow morning is um, going to be here at 10:30 a.m. Okay. And again, we are. You know, they're not giving us a forecast for this one yet, which is kind of funny. Yeah, they're not giving us a forecast yet, maybe because they just don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll probably get the forecast today for this one. But again, remember before we had a lot of supply on this one. Um, and a lot of people are looking at it going, hmm, what's going to happen? So just be prepared for that for tomorrow morning, guys. Um, and that's basically it. And like I said, this is something I wanted to point out. Make sure you guys saw that we were inside of a demand zone on the daily level. So if you guys have any questions about anything I brought up today, um, I do cover, like I said, I do cover quite a lot of stuff. Uh, we do try to do it very quickly. Um, if you have any questions, this is how you guys can contact me. You can go to the website, um, Instagram, we're over there as well. I haven't posted as much there lately. Um, I was dealing with a bit of a concussion and being sick last week, so um, was not on as much. You can follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitch. You can join the Discord channel. Um, and actually, that I need to update the Discord link. Um, it actually updated on me. But if you have any questions or you want to get on the Discord channel before I can put the new one in, email me at support at keeptradingsimple.com. Thank you so much for joining. I will see you guys next Monday. Take care.